so you know that I'm only beholding to you. That uh, uh, concludes this section. Are there any questions? Yes. What is your solution for the homeless problem, which is not just a problem in the city, but it's a problem throughout the whole Sarasota County? Answer I'll answer that question. In the city of Sarasota right now, we take care of almost 90% of all the beds that are provided in Sarasota County. We're going to work with the Salvation Army to create somewhat of, of a try to get a portal going so we can actually evaluate, try to figure out if there's a program we can get people into. Basically, a, a low level triage center trying to get that further. On the long term, we're going to have to. 20% of the jail population right now are chronic homeless. It is too expensive to keep that problem in jail. It's just too expensive. Doesn't mean it can't be held accountable for what it is, but we need to find a different solution and a diversion program for that, and I fully support that. Those are the two things that we need to start right there. Now the rest of it, I think if you talk to really anybody and you find out how the multiple layers of it, there are family portals that have been opened up in North. They're going to be open in North County. There's one in South County that's already open for the families that are having trouble. There's one that I know the city is already sponsoring the, the uh, street team programs. We're also working trying to get with the VA program to work with the veterans. So there's a multi-layer thing. I think the real problem that we're dealing with is a chronic, and those are the two issues that I think that we'll be able to help with. Go ahead, Paul. Well, since... Shannon and I are on the city commission. We're in the minority in this issue. I could pretty much, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be real original and parrot a lot of what he said. But what what I'll tell you specifically is, is um, well, first of all, you know, the word solution is a scary one because solution applies that, you know, there is a solution. And for you know, the way that I look at this homeless issue is more like trying to make better choices because a solution would be that nobody's homeless, and that's probably not likely to happen. Um, within this lifetime. So what we have to do is really try to make the greatest impact and, and uh, provide the greatest remedy that we can. In the city of Sarasota, we deal primarily with chronic homeless, which meets a, meets a very specific um, situation. And even the term homeless is probably not, um, really not applicable to that, because mostly what it comes down to is either a substance abuse problem or mental health issue or both. Now, I can go and, and complain to the state of Florida and everyone else to say, well, what have you done with the public? Uh, the public mental health beds that we've had since you know 98, we have 400,000 more than we have today, and we have more population. But really, what it comes down to is everyone within the community collaboratively doing their part. And it just it, what I think we really need to do is get to a to a spot where we are functioning as a portal, which is to to get everyone to come through the door and try to figure out what type of services best fit that person, because no two homeless situations are exactly alike. Um, but we have made we, we have made tremendous progress on the family and the children's uh, programs with a lot of help from from the not for profit. However, the chronic homeless is the part that's very emotionally charged. People get very angry about it. As a business owner, it, it has an effect from every from the business owners, from the residents to the tourists who visit. It, there is no sex, uh, sector of the of the population that is not affected in some way, shape, or form. And really, it just it, it comes. It's going to be totally dependent on what part of the collaborative process each government uh, is willing to be part of in order to, to get to this "quote unquote" better choice. Because that's really what I think we're looking for: is better choices. Well, as I intimated before, I, I went to Catholic college and I worked for the Catholic Church for a number of years, and. Then I worked for the City of Detroit Housing Commission where they attempted to house the poor, the homeless in projects. The projects don't work. Something that I think has a great potential and is uh, running into a lot of neighborhood resistance is Valerie Guillory's Trinity Without Borders. It's a private agency that seeks to place people in housing and also seeks to provide emergency placements if they can. Now, this is a private solution, receives no government funds, and unfortunately, it's running into a lot of neighborhood resistance and the government is reluctant to 
give them any kind of support at all, even water, sewer, and lights. I mean, although they can pay these bills, uh, it requires uh, zoning approval, and uh, they haven't got it. So, okay, and this organization, Trinity Without Borders, is where I made the unfortunate remark. And uh, <laughs> as I said, they're just starting to speak to me again. So uh, I continue to support this, uh, this organization, although I'm not allowed to say picking hat. And uh, I think it has great promise. And also, of course, as Shannon said, the Salvation Army. Are there any other questions? Yes. Again, I apologize. Right. Um, scatism. Do you all have anything to do with scat? Sarasota County Area right. Transit, right? So Sarasota County Area Transit. The County Commission is responsible for that. Is there a question about uh, yes. scat? Yes. I want to know when we're going to get together and make that benches that have overhang, that have chairs that work. I don't know. How many of you ever pissed in the bus? I have. I sat on a bus, it took me two hours to get home when I was teaching, and we only had one car. And this was just a couple of years ago. Now, we can allow and give money to a huge corporation to build a rowing facility. We're going to have a huge big mall there. And I have photos of benches where older people are sitting, no overhang, in the sun. I have photos of the signs that have no benches. This is prevalent throughout Sarasota County, one of the wealthiest counties in Florida. And I want to know when we're going to do something. Because bit. I'm going to do something. Yeah. I have a plan. <laughs> so. Right, I would encourage you to take a look at the Metropolitan Planning Organization's 2002 Transportation Mass Transit Tro Program for yes. Sarasota Manatee County. Well, I saw the one for Newtown. Nothing's been done with it. Okay, if you've seen the Metropolitan Planning Organization from 2002. I'll look at that. I would really, uh, part of it is getting a firm, getting the routes firmed up. There has been a lot of transfer of a couple of the routes in the last four or five years. And what happens is when you find out how they have to be done for wind load, they have to be done for safety, they have to be done for ADA, there's a lot of engineering that goes into a bus shelter. $10,000 each one. It, it, it's a little bit more money than that. But, but, it, but what happens is we have to make sure that that money that's being spent is on a permanent route. I think you've seen some of those on 41 that have been installed. I think you've seen some of them on 301 that have been installed. Once again, part of it, I'm not defending what's currently being done. I would agree with you that something has to be done. I'm just giving you from from where I've said it's basically a perspective of when the root, when the roots are firmly, finally firmed up, then you're able to budget those those improvements as they go along. Well, I'm pretty passionate about it because it's the working poor and the elderly who stand and sit with nothing. Let's get some of these huge corporations to adopt them and put their names on the back of a bench on an overhead. Certainly, adopt roads. That's a good opportunity. Yeah. You have comments? Yeah, I'll say your idea is brilliant because it's something that was brought up last year. It's actually in place now where uh, I know we do that in the city of Sarasota when they have redevelopment plans. We, we very often have them put uh, a certain type of, of uh, stop and, and bench and cover and all that because, it, you know, I, I think we deal with mass transit in a very um, reactionary way. You'll get these experts that come down and will say, oh, well, you have to have this amount. I say, we're in Florida in the summer. I don't care who you are. You don't want to be standing out in the sun. <laughs> and, you know, lots of folks have real brilliant ideas of how we should do things, but, you know, of course, they don't live here. But I, I would prefer to, to be a little more, uh, get a little more ahead of, from a planning standpoint, of how we're putting these, these routes out. I think some, uh, sometimes with the countywide inventory and what the ridership is, because one of the things I can tell you when I, when I got into this, there's very, it's very hard to find information on what is really going on logistically with the SCAT system. How many people are riding this? The administrator, right? I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm keeping track. Okay. Well, but, um, you know, like, like any other planning issue, planning is about the future. It, it, it really is. So I think better principles, better uh, planning principles for transportation are going to be a, are gonna, it's, it's a good policy just the way that you look at any planning issue. But um, as a person who grew up around a large uh, public transportation systems, I certainly am not going to make comparisons between riderships of somewhere else. But I do know that in this, this community, we, we, we need to take a good look at how we do that. We could definitely do a, a better job. All right, thank you. 
All right, now, I heard you say working poor, and I know what you mean because that's been most of my life. Even after medical school, I was working for a nonprofit organization. Zero. Okay, but anyway, okay, you and me working poor, we don't count as much as the rowing facility, which was the most recent boondoggle, or we don't count as much as the ballpark, which was the, the previous fad for government. But for everything else, in Florida, Florida tries to do government on the cheap. And this is one thing that's going to go on the cheap, whether we like it or not because we don't have the power of the seven or eight people who control all the elected offices. So we're going to have to sit and yell a little bit. And uh, if, you, if you yell at me and I'm on that panel, I will listen. Uh, you can't just vote for me. You're going to have to write my name in, by the way. I'm right in Canada. Uh, so, you know, anyway, I'm kind of for this thing but we're going to have to subsidize it until we have enough population in Sarasota actually riding it to make it pay for itself on fair box revenue. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it break even, and it, it won't work with the population size we Unless have. Unless which came first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah, but they're, they're, yeah, they're going to have to either subsidize it or they're going to have to struggle along the way they're doing. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay, well, thank you very much. And let's move on to the next session now, which is involving a... The candidates for County Commission District 4 would come up at the table, please. In alphabetical order uh, of the, the candidates, uh, first is Alan Hale. Thank you all for being here, and I know it's getting late. I'll try not to take my five minutes, but I bet I will. Uh, first of all, I want to correct something. I don't know if he's still in the room, uh, Art, that's running for judge, but he said that. Uh, uh, Notre Dame had uh, the best accounting program. I'm a graduate of another Catholic university, Seton Hall University, and they had the best accounting program. So I want to straighten that out right at the beginning. I think he left. Somebody tell him I said that. Uh, I'm here 30 years. I'll try to get through this. And sitting next to me is my wife, Nancy, who I have dragged through all of this. Uh, there's nine of us, four in my district, this district, four, and five in the other. And you really got to give a big hand to all nine because we've all heard each other's speech for probably on the 30th time tonight. Uh, about here 30 years ago, I have uh, three little children. I'm 64 years old, so my kids in the next couple of weeks will be 43, 41, and 25. My Alan is a civil engineer. He's in Chicago with two of my grandchildren, one that's only 10 days old, so we're pleased with that. My daughter lives here in the Meadows. Uh, she found a beautiful uh, place here, two bedroom, two bath, washer and dryer in it, and uh, she uh, is here with my other grandchild. And my youngest, the baby at 25, is a Sarasota County deputy, and he's working right now in this zone. So for heaven's sakes, uh, don't embarrass yourself, me, or him by doing something crazy later, and he's gotta come and talk to you. Uh, I'm an accountant by degree, and a certified planner by profession. I want to tell you a little bit about my background. I, seem, I feel like I've gone to school for the last 30 years that I've been here. I was on the uh, Sarasota County Code Enforcement Board, Board of Zoning Appeals, multi-term, multi-chairman of the Planning Commission, Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council, Florida Regional Council, and then there were some other uh, stints with the Fire Commission. I was a Fire Commissioner. Venice Chamber of Commerce as a board member, and a member, board member of the Sarasota Chamber of Commerce, and then the Commerce Area Civic Association, which is an umbrella organization for 40 homeowners associations 
and that's about 13,000 homes. Currently, I'm on the Sheriff's Advisory Board and three nonprofits, Minnesota Goodwill, uh, Sarasota Habitat for Humanity, uh, on the board, and on the board and treasurer, uh, I think I got that role simply because they knew I was an accountant, uh, the Suncoast Blood Bank. That said, I think one of the uh, biggest reasons that I'd like people to vote for me is because I not only talk the talk, I think I definitely walk the walk. My wife and I have built four businesses here in Sarasota. All, either we still own or all are still operating, paying employees, paying taxes, buying supplies and equipment from vendors. We have a, a vacation rental business. Uh, it's in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, that we've operated probably for the last, I've been looking at my wife, the last 15, 16 years. Uh, we did two restaurants. Uh, so I, I have great sympathy for anybody that owns a restaurant. We had the Frosted Mug restaurants. One was in South Venice and one was in Mid-County. And we had those for a combination, I think, of 14 years. And uh, for the last 17 years, uh, I ran, I was a principal owner of a large engineering, planning, landscape architect and environmental firm, uh, Kimley Horn. I think it's very important that you ask people what they did, uh, what they built, who they employed, and, and how they behaved while they've been here. Uh, I'll make you four promises because I'm getting a signal. Uh, you'll get full-time, calm-capable, sturdy leadership out of me. I promise to create an environment where all of our citizens, all ages, all genders, all economic groups can flourish. Make our public sector operate as efficiently and as effectively as the private sector does. And I'm tired of the no, I'm tired of the negativism. I look at you and promise you a giant dose of positive passion. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, is John Minder. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for inviting me here. My name is John Minder, and I'm a registered professional engineer, and I'm running for the Sarasota County Commission in District 4. And one of the reasons I'm running as a registered professional engineer is four years ago, I took a look at what was going on in Sarasota County. I might back up and tell you I am a 33-year resident of Sarasota County. And what I saw, I didn't really like. I, that's what got me involved. I am a registered uh, professional engineer in six states. I'm a registered professional surveyor and mapper in two states. I have 51 years of registered professional engineering experience, and I have 61 years of registered professional surveying mapping experience, starting as a rodman on a survey party when I was 18 years old. Uh, I, uh, I am a veteran of the United States Army. I am a, uh, uh, I have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from the University of Illinois, and I've done graduate work in environmental engineering at the Illinois Institute of Technology. I, uh, uh, I have been uh, married for 50 years, and uh, And my wife is a former employee. She has a degree in medical records administration and was a former uh, medical records administrator for the Sarasota Health Department for uh, 20 years. I have four children, and all my children grew up here in Sarasota. And I would like to advise all the school board. I think Sarasota County has one of the best school systems in the United States. All of my four, all of my children are uh, graduates and are graduates of Sarasota County Schools. Two are graduates of Pineview, and uh, I had three of them that did attend Pineview, and two of my children are graduates of Riverview High School. All of them are college graduates, with my two youngest children have master's degrees. 
Um, I am the president of Mender and Associates Engineering Corporation, and I've owned Mender and, Corpor Mender and Associates Corporation here in Sarasota County for the past 28 years. Prior to that time, I sold a business in Illinois called Mender Incorporated, and I had that business for eight and a half years. I had a client send me to Sarasota County. I was out on the beach walking, and that, that I decided I wanted to move to Sarasota County, and for three years we vacationed down here every year at spring break and during the summer, and in 1981 I made the decision to move here. And part of that decision was made because of my children and the Sarasota County School System. So I am, I served on the Pineview Association while my three children were attended Pineview School and resigned after my oldest daughter graduated from Pineview because I wanted to give the other parents the opportunity to serve on the association board. I served on the Maniac chapter of the Florida Engineering Society which assisted the Sarasota County government in rewriting of the Sarasota County land development regulations. I was chairman of the Mayaka chapter of the Ford Engineering Society, which reviewed and made recommendations for the design and financing of the Gulf Gate septic tank replacement system. I have uh, some of the things I've ac helped accomplish in the last four years was term limits for the Sarasota County Board of County Commissioners. I was involved in exposure and scandal and corruption in Sarasota County. County. And I made the review of the National Association of Government Procurement with its recommendations of 151 recommendations for changes in management and procurement code of Sarasota County. I was heavily involved in that. Uh, in that uh, report. And I was involved in the forced resignation of former Sarasota County Administrator Jim Lang. And some of the things, okay, some of the things I've seen accomplished uh, here in Sarasota County is uh, the uh, uh, one of the, uh, I'm getting the signal here. <laughs> Thank you all very much for inviting me here tonight. And uh, next is Ray Porter. Thank you, Dr. Brown. And thank you for everyone for coming tonight to the Meadows, to this, your beautiful association building. Um, I'm Ray Porter, and I'm running.